Pizza Aim on the Beat. Welcome back to another episode of the Blue Report. I'm Richie Blue. We have Mally Blue. And Bubsy the Science Kid. Bleh. As well. You know what it is. You know what it do. Alright, we have another video here from uh, uh, PBS Eons. Eons. And um, the title of this one here is The Age of Giants and Sex. Press the red button if you like it. Hit the subscribe button. Like, subscribe, dislike, share. Um, this is a little bit more on the educational side. You know, get your kids in tune. Pick your thumbs up if you like it. Mm. Or put your thumbs down. If you dislike it. Either which way, do you have fun? Much love to you all. And uh, let's get into this video. Let's go. episode is supported by the Great Courses Plus. Even though we often refer to this time in history as the age of mammals, we should probably be calling it the age of insects. Because just looking at the numbers, there are way more of them than there are of us. Humans alone number more than 7 billion at this point, which is a lot. But insects? Try 10 quintillion. We may like to think we're in charge because we make the rules and, well, we're bigger than they are. But insects and other arthropods weren't always so small. About 315 million years ago, they were not only abundant, they were enormous. To meet the biggest invertebrates to ever crawl across the earth, we have to go back to the Carboniferous period from 298 million to 358 million years ago. That's when you'd find the likes of Meganeura. It was a griffin fly, a giant relative of today's dragonflies that had a wingspan of about 70 centimeters. That's about the size of a pigeon, more than three times larger than the biggest living dragonfly. Meager by comparison was Stephanotypus, another griffin fly that was still some 40 centimeters across, about as big as a robin. And this greatness in size wasn't limited to insects. You see outsized arthropods all over the world during this period too, like Arthropleura. You know those cute little millipedes you find curled up under rotting logs in the woods? Now imagine one of those about two meters long and a half a meter wide, shuffling like a living carpet over the undergrowth. It was probably the largest arthropod that ever walked on land. So what allowed these invertebrates to get so big? The answer is oxygen. Take a deep breath. Hmm, right now the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is about 21%, but back in the Carboniferous it was nearly 35%. That's because the Carboniferous was a time of incredible runaway plant growth. Huge forests full of ferns, mosses, and some of the earliest vascular plants had taken over much of the planet. They sucked in the carbon dioxide and pumped out oxygen in enormous amounts. You might be thinking, Earth has a lot of trees now, so what's the difference? Well today, that big log you find in the woods with all those bugs underneath it, that log is being decomposed by bacteria, among other things, that take in oxygen and release CO2. But in the Carboniferous, those wood-eating bacteria didn't exist yet. So Earth's giant primordial forests were taking in lots of carbon dioxide and pumping out lots of oxygen. That's what plants do. But since the trees weren't decomposing, the CO2 wasn't being released back into the atmosphere. The result was an all-time high in the world's levels of atmospheric oxygen. And that's what made giant arthropods possible. Because arthropods don't breathe the way we do. They have a system of external openings called spiracles that lead to a branching network of tubes called tracheae that diffuse oxygen through their bodies. And this puts a limit on their body size. Arthropods can only get so big before they can no longer draw enough oxygen from the air. But in the Carboniferous, the abundance of oxygen in the atmosphere made it easier for arthropods to get the O2 that they needed, which allowed them to reach record-breaking sizes. In fact, paleontologists have managed to make this happen today.
play in the lab by experimenting with modern insects. By raising dragonflies, beetles, and other insects in controlled, oxygen-rich enclosures, scientists at Arizona State found that successive generations of arthropods can grow faster and larger. But of course, it's possible to get too much of a good thing. So some scientists have proposed another theory, that arthropods got huge not because they could, but because they had to. Lots of oxygen might have been beneficial for grown-up arthropods, but it also could have posed a threat to their larvae. Young invertebrates can't control their intake of air like adults can, and too much oxygen can be deadly. So researchers at Michigan State have suggested that ancient arthropods began producing bigger larvae, so they take in less oxygen relative to their body size, and those bigger larvae resulted in bigger adults. But you know enough about natural history at this point to know that even the biggest creatures don't stay on top forever. About 275 million years ago, during the Permian period, the world changed yet again. The levels of atmospheric oxygen started to plummet. Why? We're not sure. Ancient climate shifts might have had something to do with it, but as oxygen levels fell, the interiors of the world's continents got warmer. This shrunk the big swamps that acted as natural carbon sinks. Swamps weren't pumping out as much oxygen as they used to, and on top of that, decomposers finally appeared and were able to start breaking down all of the dead wood. As these microbes took in oxygen and released carbon dioxide, global levels of O2 dropped even more. And with less oxygen available, it became increasingly hard for the giant arthropods to survive. By about 305 million years ago, the two meter long arthropleura could no longer be found on the forest floor. By 299 million years ago, the last of the Meganeura had flapped its wings. The arthropods that followed never got quite as spine tinglingly large as their ancestors were, but of course, everything turned out fine for them. Today, we're totally outnumbered, both in biomass and in diversity, by insects, arachnids, and other land based arthropods. But if there ever was a time, Time that was a true age of insects, it was probably the Carboniferous period, when arthropods of all kinds were living large. Thanks to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this episode. The Great Courses Plus is a digital learning service that allows you to learn about a range of topics from educators, including Ivy League professors and other educators around the world. Go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash eons and get access to a library of different video lectures about science, math, history, literature, or even how to cook, play chess, or become a photographer. New subjects, lectures, and professors are added every month, like the Introduction to Paleontology series taught by Professor Stuart Sutherland. In it, you can learn about everything from Earth's shifting crust to taxonomy and more. With The Great Courses Plus, you can watch as many different lectures as you want, anytime, anywhere, without any tests or exams. Help support this series and start your free one month trial by clicking the link below or going to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash eon. What do you want to know about the story of life on Earth? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to go to youtube.com slash eons and subscribe. If you think dragonflies are fearsome, wait till you see their babies. Our friends at Deep Look filmed them shooting out their super fast mouth parts to catch a meal. Check it out here. Did you guys know that, um, well, that was PBS's Eons, the age of the giant insects from the carb carboniferous. Carbon. Yeah, it's carbon. So, so uh, when the earth kicked out more oxygen and had less bull crap going out into the, you know, atmosphere and stuff like that, you know, and so. the animals were big, then they... If that jet, the insects were giant. That, that giant centipede, millipede thing was like, what in the hay and the heck? Time not to get out of my pocket, man. Then... Where you going my pocket? Once so you jacked up? Once they grew, they died. <laughs> Once they... Yeah, once they... Uh, once the oxygen started to defer, they began to um, die off left and right. But there was a giant dragonfly. You know dragonflies, I was looking, I was watching the video the other day. They, they start off in the water. I already know that. They start off in the water. I didn't know that. And then they go up. And they go up and they come out and they become dragonflies, man. Then they, they actually shake their head before they get 
They shake their head. I didn't I see that's too much happening. Like they they see get that close. I know that they eat other bugs. Bugs that are annoying. The babies are going to spit their mouth out. What for real? Yeah, I heard it. They said baby dragonflies spit their mouth out to get other food. Like this. Wow. Well, we would like to thank you for watching um, Eon's PBS, know. another Eon's video, The Age of the Giant Insects, which I would have been completely terrified, just to be real with you, you know. Um, I mean, like... I'm super duper terrified, but... Because like, that's an era where... I don't even know. I don't know if people existed. I'm going to have to look that up. Like, if, if people may have existed, that's scary as hell. Like, when you have, we only had spears, if anything, at that time. Spears and possibly, if, if, let's say if people did exist, you probably had a spear or maybe a rock, but then you're fighting off multiple dragonflies the size of doves or pigeons. Are you serious? That's scary. Spiders, imagine what a spider looked like. And I don't mess with spiders. I can deal with anything but a uh, scorpion with poison. Oh, uh, shoot. Uh, I just imagine two things. What? A spider and a scorpion. Lord. That's what I'm saying. You probably gonna have to pee yourself. That might scare them off. The smell of urine might scare them off. Possibly. I don't know. One of them have sensitive nose. I think I've seen eight-legged freaks. And that's crazy. I like watching movies like that. Eight-legged freaks and, you know, arachnophobia and all the rest of that. Whatever arachnids, whatever that movie was. I could watch stuff like that, but I can look at spiders, look at them make webs, think it's cute. Beautiful, majestic, all that next stuff. But I don't want them niggas touching me. I don't want them touching me. I don't want them looking at me with all eight eyes, six eyes, however many eyes they may possibly be uh, gazing at me with. Don't look at me, fam. None of that. You heard? But on that note, once again, thank you for watching the video with us. I'm Richie Blue. This is Molly Blue. This is Bubsy the Science Kid. And this is another video by PBS. Thank you, PBS. The original video will be in the description box below. Bye. <laughs> and bye. See you later.